Entrenched Inequality and the Next Great Depression. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I thought today we would have a look at two articles. The first from the ABC about the entrenched inequality here in Australia and the next about the IMF warning about the next Great Depression. Because it's a lovely hot day here in Queensland, I've forgone the stein of coffee with a nice cool refreshing mineral water and lemon juice today. So let's keep going, pick up your beverage, have a drink and let's have a look at this article. So Australia has slightly fewer billionaires but their wealth is still increasing, says Oxfam. Okay, we're losing our billionaires but they're still getting richer. Australia's rich keep getting richer with the top 1% of Australians having more than doubled the wealth of the entire bottom 50% or more than 12.5 million people according to Oxfam. Well, the sad reality is a lot of people have absolutely no wealth. They're probably in negative wealth. Oxfam's annual list highlights inequality, highlighting inequality has found the number of billionaires in Australia has decreased from 43 in 2018 to 36 in 2019. But the number has more than tripled over the past 10 years and the value of their wealth is still increasing. The report being released ahead of the 2020 World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland found that the wealth of Australian billionaires who are mostly men grew by an average of US 460 million from 2018 to 2019. Oxfam Australia Chief Executive Lynn Morrigan said the top 1% of Australians, just 250,000 people, owned nearly 1.6 trillion, equating to 22% of the nation's wealth. This concentration of wealth in the hands of the super rich is occurring while the share of wealth of the bottom half of our community has decreased over the last decade and workers' wages continue to stagnate in Australia, she said. Well, we'll just bring up one of my favorite charts, the wage price index forecast from the Reserve Bank of Australia, and I'm sure they'll get it right next time. I'm sure of it. These were just, just little mistakes. It was unforeseen things that, that they never seem to foresee. So this concentration of wealth in the hands of the super rich is occurring while the share of wealth of the bottom half of the community has decreased. Yes, oh, I've already read that. The world's billionaires, 2,153 people in 2019, have more wealth between them than the 4.6 billion people. The report found the richest 22 men in the world own more wealth than all the women in Africa. Well, I don't know why they're making it a gendered issue, because they'll all have wives, and those wives will probably be able to take them for more than half. Just look what happened to... Uh, what Amazon, Amazon's uh, Jeff Bezos. Look what happened to him and his wife. So, global inequality is shockingly entrenched. At a global level, inequality was shockingly entrenched and vast, often affecting women and girls the most. Miss Morrigan said, "The wealthiest one percent of the world, of people in the world, have more than double the wealth of 6.9 billion people. This is not fair or sustainable. Uh, okay, why not?" Why isn't it? What's the concept of fair? The concept of fair. I think this is the, um, what is the principle? Principle. This is the uh, Pareto principle. And what we'll do is we will bring that up here. You know, so the Pareto principle, also known as the 80-20 rule, the law of the vital few, or the principle of factor sparsity, states that for many events, roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. And this is the same thing to do with economic distribution. If you want, I'll let you look at this in your own time. You can see that everywhere, even in a workplace, you know, 80% of the work is done by 20% of the people. Just think about that. Think about the stars in the office. If you're the star in the office, you know, how many people that are watching that have gone out to be a small business with one of the 20% doing 80% of the work thinking, you know what? I don't need you. I don't need you. So yes, there's a reason why you have inequalities like this, guys. Sadly, this is, I mean, this is just 
in some ways it's part of nature it's part of nature and socialism isn't the answer guys because people are not are not all equal we all have equal rights in certain things but we are not all equal because you know having you know bald men obviously they're, they're the best men yeah definitely definitely so it said the monetary value of women's unpaid care work globally for women aged 15 and over is at least 10.8 trillion annually three times the size of the world's tech industry oh come on come on what rubbish what rubbish you no it's not worth that it's not do it's it, unpaid caring work is very important particularly for raising a family but it has other rewards it's a lot more fulfilling than working for a tech company that treats you like crap and then cast you aside you can't yeah i mean why are they making this a gendered issue can someone explain that to me please oxfam's report cited world bank figures showing almost half the world is trying to survive on five dollars fifty a day or less and they're probably living in environments where that five dollars fifty us a day has significantly greater purchasing power than in other nations guys according to forbes billionaire list the world's wealthiest man in 2019 was amazon's founder jeff bezos with an estimated fortune of 131 billion he was followed on the Forbes list by microsoft bill gates the u.s inventor and ceo of berkshire hathaway warren buffett or investor and CEO. So Bates is 96 billion, Buffett has 82.5 billion. Call to collect more tax from wealthy and multinationals. Call to collect more tax from wealthy and multinationals. Because that is, that's what's going to solve all these inequality problems. This is the problem. This is the problem. Uh, Oxfam said taxing an additional 0.5% of the wealth of the richest 1% of the next 10 years is equivalent to investments needed to create 170 million jobs in education, health, elderly care, and other sectors to close care deficits. Okay, but if you tax that money out of them, they're not going to spend that money. They're not going to invest that money. They're not sit. They're not like Scrooge McDuck sitting on piles of money. Where do you think most of Bill Gates' wealth is? Where do you think most of Warren Buffett's wealth is? Or oh, actually, Buffett's probably sitting in cash at the moment. What about Bozos? Oh, Bozos, Bezos. How much of that is tied up into Amazon? How many people does Amazon employ? How many people does Amazon allow to start their own businesses, work from home? I know I get ads for them all the time on YouTube. It's created a wealth of opportunities. And then that flows through to the greater economy, guys. This is the thing. The, what do you want? Do you want the private sector to spend, invest, and grow, or do you want to tax them and then put it into into the other things? It's not going to be a net gain. They, this money, this 117 million jobs, 170 million jobs are going to be removed from other parts where you're taking the tax. All the use tax mitigation strategies. Miss um, Morrigan said Oxfam had calculated that developing countries lose an estimated 100 billion a year in tax revenue as a result of tax avoidance. By multinational corporations given the state of inequality in australia and abroad and the context of worsening climate related disasters such as oh bloody hell such as the bush bushfires the australian government must ensure that multinational corporations are paying their fair share of taxes see this is the thing i have an issue i have an issue with the royalty system for our minerals where it's not based on the extracted material but on the profits I don't give a crap about the profits. Let the business make the profits, do whatever that is. A portion of the extracted resources should be given back to the civilization they're taken from as the price for the privilege of doing that. And then you use that, you use that for the continuation and improvement of the civilization. Then let them do whatever gains they want with their taxes. Just the ATO, they can cut a few staff, cut some unnecessary services. So this is this is the issue this is this, a simplistic understanding of it so this would boost public funding to allow it to provide better services to all australia and better response to da disasters both here and across the world well we need to look at if our disaster mitigation strategies are underfunded and if that would make a difference because that's questionable if you've ever worked with some of these organizations they, they have money miss morrigan called on the federal government to introduce publicly available country by country reports on the tax affairs of multinationals and to introduce a public register of beneficial ownerships of companies and trusts. No, 
I don't want that. I do not want that at all. Globally, there are also calls for, for, from economists and others to introduce a global minimum tax on companies worldwide. So a global government. A global government. So there's no potential for nations to create a, an advantage for their own nation to encourage more pe businesses to set up shop by giving tax adv advantages. Oxfam re Oxfam's report is based on data from Credit Suisse Global Wealth Data Book published in the second quarter of 2019 as well as the Forbes Billionaires list published in February 2019. All this talk about businesses paying their fair share of tax, what about you get the working class out of paying tax? We increase the tax-free threshold. I'm sure a lot of people would rather pay less tax and maybe get a little less government services that they probably, a lot of them don't need. But let me know what you think about that, guys. So let's jump to the next one. You know, there's concerns from the IMF that we are heading towards another economic depression. And again, it's to do with wealth inequality. And here she mentions the UK wealth gap. Um, so Christina Georgiava compares today with the Roaring Twenties and criticizes the UK wealth gap. The head of the International Monetary Fund has warned the global economy is at risk of returning to a Great Depression driven by inequality and financial sector instability. Speaking at the Peterson Institute of International Economics in Washington, um, she said, new IMF research, which compares the current economy to the Roaring Twenties that culminated in the great market crash of 1929, revealed that a, that a similar trend was already underway. While the inequality gap between countries has, had closed in the last two decades, it had increased within countries, she said, singling out the UK for particular criticism. In UK, for example, the top 10% control now nearly as much wealth as the bottom 50%. This situation is mirrored across much of the OECD, where income and wealth inequalities have reached or are near record highs. In some ways, this troubling trend is reminiscent of the early part of the 20th century, when the twin forces of technology and integration led to the first Gilded Age, the Roaring Twenties, and ultimately financial disaster. She warned that fresh issues such as the climate emergency and increased trade protectionism meant the next 10 years were likely to be characterized by social unrest and financial market volatility. Again, it's everyone's talking about this climate emergency. Everyone. I, I, it's repeated in every news piece. Again, it comes to a point now where you just have to blindly accept that in any criticism, you're labeled a denier or a hater, even when you can have a valid, coherent argument. doesn't matter doesn't matter this is what's happening it's appearing again and again and politicians it looks like she's just following along so if i had to identify a theme at the outset of the new decade it would be increased uncertainty she said with disputes still raging between the u.s and europe she said the global trade system is in need of significant upgrading maybe maybe these countries need to start stepping out of the global trade system and just freeing it up a little bit perhaps she said uncertainty affected not only businesses but individuals, especially given the rising inequality within many countries. She said the ex that excessive inequalities hinders growth and can fuel populism and political upheaval. Well, she's right there. She's certainly right there. Eric Lecompente, the head of debit charity Jubilee USA, said the IMF delivered a stark message about the potential for another massive financial disaster that we last experienced during the Great Depression. With inequality on the rise and concerns of stability in the markets, we need to take this warning seriously. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. In the last Great Depression, they wouldn't have done what they're doing now. Here, they'll just print money to the ends of the earth with QE. How long will it take for people to wake up? How long until we get potentially hyperinflation? While government's spending to help those at the bottom is key, she added, too often we overlook the financial sector, which can also have a profound and long-lasting positive or negative effect on inequality. In a new study presented ahead of updated economic forecasts due next week, the IMF highlighted how access to the financial sector in China and India in the 1990s paved the way for enormous economic gains in the 2000s. This in turn helped lift billions of people out of poverty, she said, but she cautioned against the excesses that led to the 2008 global financial crisis and noted that for many the crisis has never ended with one in four young people in europe at risk of falling into poverty 
There is no substitute for high-quality regulation and supervision, she said. We are safer, but not safe enough. So it's interesting she's, she is drawing parallels to the Great Depression and concerned about the UK wealth gap, but she hasn't made any mention about the significant amount of immigration from lower-skilled uh, developing nations that have flooded the UK in recent years and have really depressed the wages of the working class in the United Kingdom. No mention of that at all. No mention of that at all. And there you go. And then you've got also the social unrest that comes with that. And you've got the increased burden on there. And, you know, public housing over there is a nightmare. The um, NHS is just terrible. The quality of service that some people are getting there. And the costs are skyrocketing. That's not mentioned, is it? Not at all. Not at all. So what do you think, guys? Do you think we need to take a page from Oxfam and see big, rich companies that aren't paying their fair share? Because, you know, you they just sit on the piles of money. They don't actually invest it in other things. They don't employ people with the money. You know, the wealth of, you know, probably the wealth of some of these businesses is inflated because of QE pumping up the stock prices. You know, let's just, just tax, tax the rich. That's all of the solutions. You, you, I get, but I, I mean, these charities, what, how else do they approach these things? They, they won't think of, you know, different methods. Looking at freeing up red tape to allow new business. I mean, here we have, yesterday I was talking, a few days ago I was talking about in North Queensland now where government are putting in restrictions on, you know, you have to pay penalty rates after 38 hours for mango pickers. So the people that fly in from East Timor to pick mangoes, their amount of money they can take home have been restricted. Australians, apparently it's too hard to get them to go out there to work and I can understand the travel would be a lot of cost and the work would be hard and they might expect the overtime pay where the guy from East Timor, he doesn't care. He just wants to work because that money will buy him a lot more in his home country. So there you go, guys. That's where I'd say let's have a special economic region in, in northeast Queensland where that legislation doesn't apply to people that are working for short periods of time, for, say, two, three months, picking mangoes. Give them the choice of doing it. And for ever, anyone who's going, oh, it's slave labor. It's just, no, it's not. No, it's individual liberty. It's allowing the per it's giving the person, the employee, the worker, agency to make that decision on their own to decide to improve their life where otherwise you're take, taking away from that agency from them you're saying no you're too dumb to negotiate you're too dumb and stupid to make an agreement you need to work like this oh sorry you know you can't you're only allowed to work that much you can't work anymore we want to spread out the work remember the Pareto principle 80 20 rule there are probably some mango pickers there that are you know getting paid by how much and they're probably earning a lot more because they're working a lot faster no no we need to level everyone out we need this equality. Everyone poor. Anyway, let me know your take on this, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you're a fan of the channel and you want to support us, I have a Patreon where you can make a small monthly donation. We also have the ability for you to join the channel here on YouTube where you get access to badges and um, emojis. We have affiliate links with Independent Reserve for your crypto traders. Amazon and eBay for your consumer purchases. We sell our own merch on the Heises website, Pocket Squares, and made here by Rachel. And finally, we have PayPal for people who want to make and support the channel that way. Thank you all very much. Have a great day, and I will talk to you all later. Bye for now.